ladies and gents we are due for a good talk with this video it's been a long time coming and honestly it's probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I get on this channel and that is about old Skip and Schmelt here I know it's a pearl spit out from the deep blue herself but <laughs> I get asked about it all the time I mean I'm kind of kicking myself that I haven't made a video on it yet because literally I get asked all the time on you know what type of boat is that how much did you pay for that how did you kit out your boat what kind of stuff did you put on your boat? I mean, these are all questions I'll probably touch on today, but mostly I just wanted to walk you guys through, you know, the hatches, the different types of storage that I have in here, how I set up the decking system, all the little ins and outs stuff. I don't have a lot of pictures of when I was putting this thing together, so I'm probably not gonna show the process too much, but I'll throw the pictures kind of in, in where they fit where we are in the video so you guys can see a little bit of it like i said i do have a couple pictures but most of today's video is just about answering those questions and then showing you the boat itself so before i dive too much into the video i gotta dive into skip and schmelt here get her all cleaned up get my gear packed out and then get it all prepped for you guys so that she's nice and presentable but with that being said guys stick around and we're gonna dive into this video I think she's clean enough for the video. So I guess I'll start with the uh, front end of the boat and I'll show you the trolling motor, the graph, my setup there, uh, the receptacle for the trolling motor, kind of how I did that right there. I'll walk you guys through that. I'll show you my four front hatches that I have. Generally how I built the frame, I might have some pictures of that. I'll show you the flooring because there is a flat flooring in there which makes it super, super nice. I'll show you the, the back deck as well. I have six different hatches back there, uh, two really big ones, two small ones, and two medium sized ones. And I can open those up so you guys can see the general framing. I might have pictures of those as well. And then I'll show you my, my motor and I guess from there, that'll be kind of everything to see in the boat. It's only a 12 foot little tin can, so there's not, there's not a lot of real estate with this thing. But she's clean, she runs. I can't complain, it gets me from point A to point B and it's caught tons of fish and been in some crazy areas. So with that being said, I'll put you guys on the small tripod here and I'll walk you through the boat. Probably what makes this boat the most comfortable to fish out of is the technology that goes into the front here. Uh, recently I just upgraded to the Minn Kota power drive uh, with the iPilot on it so it has the spot lock technology and that makes this thing so nice. Out on windy days this thing just gets blown around like it's only 12 foot and super light so when you're standing on it you're like a human sail so so having that spot lock is super nice keep you in one place you fish way more comfortably and then I have a nine inch graph. Uh, so having a nine inch graph on the front allows me to run one graph on this boat, which is super nice because I can sit in the back and it's a big enough screen for me to still see the front. So I'm not running wires and I'm not running fish finders all over the place. So having these two things up in the front of the boat as a power duo really, really makes this boat comfortable. I mean, there's probably more money in just a trolling motor in the graph right here than there is in the entire boat. <laughs> having that kind of equipment, I think goes a long ways and can make it easier on you as a fisherman, which means you can get better at your craft. So real quickly, I'll show you guys how I made this nose piece here, how I fabricated it, and I'll show you like the receptacle, how I mounted it on there. I actually have a quick release bracket for the trolling motor, and uh, that allows me to slide the trolling motor on and off when I need to. Real quick, that's the uh, nose piece to the front of the boat there. As you can see, I have it closed off. I have a receptacle that I can plug. I just attached the plug in there at the end. That guy can just plug in right there. Uh, the fish finder, I just mounted on to the U-bracket right here. So this U-piece here has the four bolts through it and then the actual nose piece, you can see right here too, right? Uh, it's actually inside, inside there, there's another bolt. Uh, so that's what fastens it down to 
the boat itself is just through the gunnels. There's a little lip right there that I just ran those bolts through. And then the trolling motor, like I said, I have that quick release bracket right there. So this piece is mounted to the trolling motor. This piece is mounted to the, the nose piece here of the boat. Uh, so I can actually slide it. I can slide it in and out if I need to. So if I'm, you know, traveling a long ways, I can throw this in my truck. You know, I'm just going down the road. I can have it on pre ready to go. Or when I'm home and I'm not fishing, I can slide it off and then I can put it away. And then I just enclosed it with this piece here. Uh, it's all open underneath there to the rest of the nose and that's where my wires are running through. As you can see, I have a wire for the graph right here that plugs into the back. I can tilt that how I need to when I'm standing up here in the middle. I can angle that way up so I'm looking straight down on the graph so it makes it pretty nice having this stuff up here. So the nose piece is pretty easy. Like I said, I have four hatches here in the front so I'll jump into those real quick. I have a battery hatch. I have a deep stow hatch for like my my uh, terminal tackle, my, my plastic boxes essentially. And then I have a hatch for tools and just boat supplies. And then the other small hatch is gonna be for all my plastics that I stuff in. We'll dive in, I'll show you guys those as well. Okay, starting with the first hatch, I got my battery hatch here. As you can see, it's kind of warp. All this is wood right here on top of an aluminum framing. Uh, I did seal it, I painted them. You can see right there, I did paint them. And I sealed them pretty good at first, but I guess not good enough for, for a year's use because there was definitely some moisture that got in there and that's why it warped. These little tabs here, they're on all my hatches. This was just gonna be a temporary deal. I was gonna buy some hatch lift systems for that, but uh, you know, they've they've worked. I haven't had to change them out. I haven't had any pull out on me. So it's like, what the heck, I'll just leave it for now. But ideally I wanna get like a little lift on there. But yeah, you can see there, that's how I staple the carpet in. Uh, the aluminum frame, it's the first bit that you guys have seen. I added a little piece of Velcro here to help keep it down. This is my battery hatch. So I got my battery here, and that's linked up to my trolling motor and my fish finder. As you can see in here, I put in a bunch of pool noodles, and that is not to help with the buoyancy of the boat, guys. That's just, if the boat does sink, at least it'll help it stay up a little longer. Now, there's not a whole lot of foam in this boat, so if it sinks, I'm pretty sure it's just going down. But hey, we die honorably here. But you can see down there, way down here, I added a an aluminum, I added like an aluminum bracket to hold the, the battery so it's not sitting on the bottom of the boat. It's actually flat and I can pull this out of this bucket here. But this battery tray here is bolted down to the frame. So all I gotta do is pick up the battery, slide it out, and I'm good to go. I got my side hatch here. Small hatch, painted of course. And then I got all my boat accessories, toilet paper, you know, everything that you would, you absolutely need in here. I got my dog's bowl for water. Just a little bit of everything in there. It's kind of my accessory box. Oh, and as you can see, I added these dividers right here, uh, and I'll get to those in a second because that's super important. All right, now onto the big boy here. This is probably one of my favorite hatches in the entire boat because I can throw so much in it. I mean, I've thrown boxes with jackets and bibs as you probably saw earlier. Uh, I mean, I can fit so much in this box, so it really takes all the clutter on the deck of the boat, and I can just kind of cram it in there and get it out of sight, out of mind. So let's check it out. Big hatch, stickers there, big deep stow. That goes all the way down to the bottom of the boat. You can see the aluminum framing there. I got two of these, two of these kind of bumpers here. And that just really allows me to, uh, when I open this hatch, it's not pulling on this hatch either. So I can just open it independently and I'm not ripping all my other hatches open, which is super nice. Kind of like your rod locker and your bigger bass boat. It's kind of that same design, but it makes it super nice because I can throw all my boxes in there. And it's good to go. I think I could fit like probably 10, I could probably fit 10, 3,600 boxes in there. And I could probably fit six or seven, 3,700 size boxes. So quite a bit of storage. I can't bring everything, but I can bring a good bit. So oh, that's probably one of my main hatches. And I really reinforced it in this area so I could have a big open area like that. I mean, that does not flex at all. Like that's, that's not going anywhere. Out here in Arizona where it's super hot, uh, you can't have hinges all over your boat. So I really wanted to go with like a hidden hinge design. So I fabricated these here. I have the hinge with a piece of angled aluminum that's drilled into the frame. And then that's a piece of aluminum there and onto the hinge. And then uh, what I did there is I made the same kind of lip on the other side. So instead of drilling into the board this way, I'm actually drilling into it this way. I'll show you here real quick. So you can see right there, it picks up on the bottom picks up on the bottom of the hatch. That's that's pretty key, keeps the hinge hidden. I got one right there as well, you can see. So when you're stepping on it, it's just not hot on your feet. I built this boat pretty quick, but I really wanted it to be quality and something that would last me a long time. That hidden hinge thing was a big deal to me. 
I knew that I didn't want hinges and clutter all over this boat. I wanted to keep it as slick as possible, but maximize the storage as well. I mean, it's a 12 foot boat. Any little bit of gear or fishing stuff that you bring in gets all over the place really quickly and clutters the boat. You want as much room to maneuver as possible. I mean, it's pretty stable, but it's not like the most stable boat out there. It's compared to like a 16, 17, 18 foot boat. Um, it's not as stable. So having more space to kind of walk around, not worry about tripping anything, it was really big to me. But we'll dive into the final hatch here. And this is where I put all my soft plastics. All right, so we got this guy. Same, basically same thing as that one over there, but you can see it's emptied. So it's just a tough box inside. I drilled out these holes so, you know, moisture could drain down into kind of a mid-range box so I can throw plastics in. I mean, I put all my plastics in the Ziploc bag and uh, they can dance down pretty easily in there. And they don't get all messed up either too. And they're out of the sun so they don't melt. In the middle of the summer, if you have your plastics on, on the deck of your boat, they're gonna melt. So this just keeps them cool, keeps them out of the sun. Again, I got that little divider right there, so that makes it super nice as well. I can let that fall, open it up, and they're all super tight too. Like, there's a little bit of resistance when I pull this up. It's not like it's free willing, and the wind's not going to blow that up at all, which is nice. But yeah, so essentially how I did the frame here is you can see this one here. I get, it's basically it's basically like a big A frame. So I got this heavy duty bar going all the way across there, and then I got these ones here that are going up the middle as well as that one there so this is one big bar that's going all the way up tube out right here and then uh, same thing on that side and then from about right here in this corner I have a bar that's going you can actually see where that screw is all the way up to the nose of the boat and that's my a-frame part that goes on both the ways so I have my my bars going up my a-frame and then I got bars going across this way for the tops of the hatches as you can see right up top over there so any of those big bars they're they're pretty heavy aluminum they're solid uh, it's made this boat a little lighter like I said lightness is, is the key with this boat I want it to be as light as possible because the lighter it is the faster the boats gonna go so it moves pretty good I mean for a little 12 foot boat it feels like you're skipping across the water uh, <laughs> When you're just sitting on this i mean you're basically sitting flat on top of the water that's why we call it the skip and smell because it just skips along but essentially that's the whole front deck now with my last design i had the front deck a little lower which made it a little more stable but the lower you get the less area that you have so i wanted to raise it up a little bit and i actually extended it a foot back so doing that allowed me to add all these storage compartments here as well as just have more room up front i mean i fished with two guys up here in the front before uh, it's not a big deal it gets kind of tight but it's definitely doable if you're like paralleling a bank raising the deck up extending it back you just get a lot more space you have more real estate to walk around on so it's it's pretty nice guys i mean i'm really really happy with how this design has come out so far okay so now moving into like the the sides i guess you could say the bookends of each deck on the front and the back as well as the floor i'll kind of show you that real quick so as you can see here i completely closed this off not a big deal there's actually nothing underneath there it's just bolted to the frame right here i haven't had too many problems every now and then i've had to go and retighten a screw because it just shimmies loose but Really, that's no big deal to me. You're never really kicking this. Um, so that just kind of encompasses it all, closes it off. In my old framing, I had a piece that came from here all the way to the back, and it just was like a big hatch that was right here. It was cool. It was cool, but it really didn't allow for a whole lot of walking space in here. Um, as you can see, where the carpet was, this was hidden with that old design. And since I took it out, you can see the actual belly of the boat, but that's no big deal. It doesn't really bother me. Every now and then I'll get, you know, a plastic that falls down there or whatever. Uh, this floor is really easy to pull out. All I have to do is take those bookends off and then just lift the floor and I can get anything in the belly of the boat. So as far as the floor goes here, just a big piece of plywood. It's literally sitting on, it's literally sitting on the belly of the boat right now on these ribs, as you can see right there. Uh, so I just cut little notches out so it'll fit around the ribs, carpet of that, sealed it really good and threw it on the bottom. So that's nice. Before I had it where the, the, the floor actually ended right here. Now I have it go underneath a little bit so that I don't have a gap. Things can't fall in between there. Like there's still a bunch of wood that goes underneath that. So that's pretty nice there. Uh, same thing with the back. And as far as like the ends go, just screwed into the frame. The frame essentially you just got a bar going this way, bar going this way, bar going this way, and a bar going this way as well as one big one that goes across and in the back. So pretty simple, but uh, it makes it really light. And for this boat, like I said, for that old dude right there, uh, it needs as light of a boat as possible because it's an old girl. That thing has pushed it many hours, many miles. So the lighter I can get this boat, the easier it is. And that girl right there. We've pretty much covered the nose of the boat all the way from the front decking to the middle 
Um, I'll show you guys the back deck as well. Now, I mean, the back deck is nothing but storage hatches. Like the whole thing is is six different hatches. There's there's not one part like like the front deck where there's spacers and little mini things. I figure I'm gonna spend most of my time up on the front deck anyways. At the back deck, I can just really use for storage and get the weight towards the back of the boat. So that's kind of like the meat and potatoes as far as is like life jackets fire extinguisher throw cushion all that kind of stuff as well as if i have a buddy fishing with me they can throw all their stuff in the back hatches have an entire area to themselves i can put my stuff in the front and uh we don't have to worry about walking over each other i mean like i said it's a 12 foot boat the more space the more efficiency the better i'll start with the three front hatches and then i'll go to the three back hatches on the back deck and uh, kind of walk you guys through that they're not as nicely done as the front ones like i said i just kind of threw them together real quick to get the boat going okay so the first little hatch that we'll start with here you can see that hinge again i left that open right there um, i actually throw a lot of baits in there i didn't purposely leave it open that's just kind of how like the design work but it's super nice because i can throw baits right there and they're kind of out of the way but here you go this is the back hatch see it's pretty small uh it's probably smaller than the front small ones there i throw my plug in here i usually keep a bunch of water bottles in there it'll hold like man that'll hold like probably 10 water bottles or so like it does really good like i said no dividers here so this is literally the, the side you can see there this is the side of that middle hatch there and that's where i keep life jackets you gotta love my funky life jacket there i'm probably gonna get that changed but you can see it's just kind of got all the nitty gritty stuff in there as well just one big hatch heavy uh heavy framing that went into that it's a solid piece of wood so that doesn't flex at all i've had no warpage with the back hatch systems just that one up front so it seems like they're holding up pretty good you guys can kind of see how the framing is right here so i got the beam that goes all the way up to the front and then they just go back just like that okay so here we have the other hatch there's the front of the boat and same kind of thing same things over there i keep daily dogs food in there i'll throw my snacks in there keep that all together got a little spot to throw baits and miscellaneous stuff in there now onto like i guess you could say the co-angler the co-angler hatches or the buddy hatches whatever you want to call them big lifting hatch so this was important to me too with all these hatches i didn't want them to open up weird ways i wanted them to open up where it was easily accessible and the most efficient but you don't want to open them up where the hatch is coming to you you want to open them up to where the hatch is going away from you so you can see into the actual box so instead of it opening up from here over i made it to where it opens from here over so that way if you're sitting down or whatever you can get into this you're not looking over this which i mean it probably wouldn't have been a big deal but it's just a little thing to with this boat so onto this guy transducer cables in there sorry i have a temporary one right now so i'm just literally running it straight from the transducer up, up the boat to the front uh usually this would run actually i have my old one right here from underneath there right here and then all the way up to the nose of the boat but that one crapped out so i got a temporary one right now and then you can see that big slat of carpet i put in there so that just helps protect uh someone's boxes from a little bit of water that does get in there keeps it off the bottom so you have an area and that'll still hold a good amount of space you can throw a jacket in there your lunch uh boxes whatever uh so that's a nice little hatch as well getting into the nasty part of the boat there's the big gas tank so it's a six gallon holds a bunch of gas which is nice it's a two stroke so i have to pre-mix all the fuel and everything uh, you can see that framing that's going back in there and i have those two legs against the transom it's a reinforced transom but yeah i just throw that in there like i said with this hatch i made it opening this way instead of the other way i have more framing the hinge probably would have fit better right here uh, but i just don't want to be filling up my gas opening it that way and it might hit the tiller so opening it up that way was just a little better of an idea to me all right on to the last hatch but there's that final hatch same thing you can see that carpet that's in there the gas tank i used to have foam dividers in there to keep them separate but they kind of just disintegrated away so i'm not really too worried about it honestly like i said it's just kind of to get stuff back there and out of the way so for this design I, I did have to drill quite a bit into the boat like as you see on the sides there's little holes and stuff just tattered all through this that's just where the framing goes through uh, you can't really get around it and it's an old boat my uh, i believe my great grandfather purchased this boat for a couple hundred dollars in like 1964 or something like that so this thing is uh <laughs> it's been through it's been through a lot and there's a lot of uh, little battle scars on it i mean scuffed up all over the place 
I mean, you could you could buff it and buff it and buff it and do whatever you wanted to. You'll never get some of these scratches out. But it, it adds character, you know. I mean, it's a good boat. You guys you guys see it in all my videos. It goes places. It flat out catches fish. It runs in like six inches of water, so that's pretty nice too. It's a super lightweight boat and overall does really good. The trolling motor on the front is a 55 pound, 45 inch, uh, so it makes this boat haul. Like I can get up to about three, three and a half miles an hour on just the trolling motor. But I do have a real quick question for you guys. Since I have gotten this trolling motor. I'm having a lot of interference on my fish finder and I've tried running it on different nodes of the battery. I haven't tried running it on separate batteries yet. I really don't have the storage for another big battery so I might have to run it off like a smaller 12 volt battery. But if you guys have kind of come into that as well and you've had a problem with that in the past and have fixed it, please let me know down in the comment section below or if you know the answer on how to fix it, please let me know. Uh, any ideas will help because it's kind of a pain. I like dropping straight down on fish now that I have the spot lock but I, I can't drop straight down on them if I can't see them. So just let me know if you guys know an answer or a trick to kind of help fix that. That would be greatly appreciated. Real quick, because I don't think I touched on it. Um, the motor on the back is a 1995 or 1996 uh, Johnson Evinrude. Uh, it's a two-stroke, 15-horsepower motor. You know, it runs great. It's had some work in the past, uh, but it's great on gas. Like on that six-gallon tank, I mean, I can run up and down Pleasant two or three times and not run out of gas, which is super nice. But uh, I mean, that's that's the basics of the boat. If you guys are building a John boat and trying to convert it into a bass boat style, I have found for me personally, as far as efficiency goes and functionality, uh, this design is probably the best. I mean, it gives you the best amount of storage, gives you the best amount of room inside to walk around. I've gone through probably three different designs in this boat, and this is the one I'm probably gonna stick with. It just seems to be the most open and the most efficient. Like I said, I, I have two guys on this all the time, and it fishes great, especially with the, the spot lock in the front now. I mean, it's a game changer. I can really hold one spot and have the whole boat to move around. Daisy Dog's always in it. She has her place that she lays down. The big thing about stability in these little boats is where you put the decking as far as the height on the boat. If you have it too high, it's gonna get it's gonna get kind of wobbly. If you have it too low, then you're gonna be hitting the gunnels when you try to flip or something like that. You might not you might not get the most space on your deck. My boat in particular is a, a V-hull, so you know when you're up front you have the deck really high, it makes it really squirrely. So you have to drop it down a little bit. So I think I found the perfect medium. If you guys have a flat bottom John boat, then you really don't have to worry about it because it's got so much surface area that's hitting. But out here, if you're going to be fishing the big lakes and you have a John boat, I'd really recommend going with that V-hole style because that's going to give you the ability to cut through the bigger waves out here. You're not going to be crashing like you would if you had a flat bottom John boat. So real quick, I'll just give you guys a couple overall shots of what the boat looks like to see like a wide view of it. Uh, feel free to pause if you need to just to kind of see the video and piece it together in your mind if you have to. I know I kind of just ran through it really quickly. I'm not trying to make this a super long video, just a quick snappy one to answer some questions that you guys have had. If you still have questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'm sure I didn't touch on everything. So if you do have some questions, let me know and I can uh, answer them in the comment section. But she's a great boat. She gets me from point A to point B. I catch a ton of fish in it and uh, it just gets me around like I can't complain. I mean, it's no bass, cat, skeeter, ranger, whatever fits your fancy, but it is a good boat and it catches fish and it gets me around. So that's all I really need. It is a mirror craft if you guys were wondering what the brand was. But with that being said, guys, that pretty much uh, wraps up the video. Like I said, I just wanted to run through it real quick and break it down to you guys so you guys can see what I'm working with. So I hope it helped out and gave you guys some ideas on how you can do your build. Thank you so much for your interest in old Skip and Schmel here. And uh, we'll be back on the water soon in the next video. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I'll see you in the next one.